This is a video about using GeoGebra to show statistical graphs and you know, dealing with statistical data. First of all, how to start GeoGebra. Well, I use the web version, so it's website www.geogebra.org, so it's G-E-O-G-E-B-R-A. Um, and I use the web version because I've had some issues, particularly in copying and pasting data uh, with the app uh, for Windows. That could just be me, but anyway, I've got on well with the web version and I can use it in various places. Now, the other thing to say is that I use Chrome. Um, Chrome seems to work better for copying and pasting data in. Um, the keyboard shortcuts, Control C and Control V, work very well in Chrome. Um, not so well necessarily in other browsers um, and the sort of right click other means of copying and pasting data seem a bit unreliable with GeoGebra so um, Chrome browser GeoGebra.org right the next thing is where do you go once you've opened it up to get into the statistics bit um, well the way I found it there might be a faster way but I go to this GeoGebra thing here at the top and then I've got choices of what to do here. Now I'm going to click on Geometry Calculator and if I'm quick, if I click that, I can then click on the spreadsheet thing over here, but I'm never quick enough and it pops up with the spreadsheet thing here. So what do I do to get into the spreadsheet, which is what I need to do. There are two menus here. There's a main menu and a little sub menu. Now I need the little sub menu, the one with the circle and triangle on. I click that and it reveals the menu here and then the dot 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 is a further menu and under here there is a spreadsheet option. Okay, You can rewind the video to see that again I'm not going to repeat myself here so click on spreadsheet. Okay, Once I've got this spreadsheet I've got my spreadsheet here and I've got my main um, other drawing thing here. Spreadsheet here, drawing thing here. I want to get rid of this um, sort of classic GeoGebra area. To do that, if I hadn't expanded it, I'd have to expand this menu, then click on this dot dot dot, and then choose close. Now I've just got the spreadsheet. Okay, and if I click on it, I get the spreadsheet menu at the top. Right, getting data into the spreadsheet. So I've gone into a browser, GeoGebra. I found how to bring up a spreadsheet. So here is some data. I've got it in Excel. Um, now, GeoGebra is a little bit slow as soon as you try and put lots and lots of data in here. So I have found it is best just to put in the data that you're going to directly use and analyze, um, not everything. So I'm going to extract the information that I'm interested in. I'm interested in life expectancy at birth and birth rate. Okay, per thousand. So I'm going to copy those and I'm going to use the keyboard. I'm going to hold the control key and then press C whilst still holding the control key. Dots round means I've copied it to the clipboard. That's an imaginary thing. Now I go back to GeoGebra, click in the top left cell of where I want that copy to, hold control and then press V while still holding control. That's the keyboard shortcut to enter it. It's not instant. You might need to be patient and wait for that to happen. It can take a few seconds depending on the speed of your computer and the size of what you're pasting in. Um, but it will get in um, provided we're using Chrome, keyboard shortcuts, Control c Control v The right click menu uh, looks like copy works but it, um, from my experience this is a little bit hit and miss. Uh, so it doesn't always work for me. So, but the keyboard works well. So that's my tip. Right, we then need to select the data we're interested in statistically graphing or analysing. Okay, so I could select the specific numbers and keep scrolling down, that's a bit of a bother. So I'll just click the column heading and select the whole column. It will then extract the sensible information. It will ignore blanks and titles and stuff like that. So this is just one set of numbers. So this is my main button, this button here, which I will use to analyze my data. 
Okay. Uh, it's not two variable, it's not multiple variable, it's one variable because it's just one column of stuff. So I click that and I'll get a graph. There we go. Um, and the default is histogram. But there are, if you see, click that little arrow here or anywhere on there, and I've got a number of different options. Okay, so there's histogram, there's a bar chart, box plot, dot plot, stem and leaf, and a normal quartile plot, which looks quite interesting for this one. Um, let's go back to the histogram. So you've got those basics, but there's actually quite a lot more than just putting a basic graph. Next to this, uh, next to the others, there are there are different options. Okay, um, with the histogram, this one's quite nice. This changes the interval width of your bar. So if I go right down here, I'm going to get big fat bars. Um, so it looks like there's a lot of data between sort of 76 and 90. Um, quite a bit in the middle in there. But if you put more detail up, you can begin to see what's happening. So that up to 90, if you go far enough, it's just a single value at 90. Most things are less than 85. And you've got a flatter thing here and then a bit of a peak. And it's, yeah, so you can change the interval width. And that's really quite nice that you can do that so quickly with a little slider and get a feel for what things look like and what graph might be most appropriate. So that's the slider. If you want your to extract this, yes you can do a screen grab uh, if you've got a print screen button um, or use a window snipping tool or whatever system you're on. But there's also this button here, okay, which is an export. You've got an export as picture option. Um, so I can then download whatever okay as a as an image um right so that's um the slider this little cog thing look out for this on all of them that gives you further options and we can do quite a lot with that with this histogram okay some of them have less not quite so much but histogram is your basic thing but you can do a frequency polygon okay you can take away the histogram and I can even turn it into a cumulative graph rather than uh, a frequency one. Um, and there I've got a cumulative frequency curve, okay, which is quite nice. It's all under the same thing, just tweaking my options. And by changing this, I can change the granularity of it and get a slightly... Uh, see, this is quite a chunky three-point graph. This is a little bit smoother following the, the points as you go. So, yeah, pick your basic. Let's, let's put it back to histogram without cumulative. There we go. Let's put that back. So, you've got your basic choice, and under here, you know, quite nice things seeing the difference between histogram and bar chart. Yes, or well, maybe I don't like this bit over here. If I click this cog button again, it removes that. It's like a toggle. Click it, it appears. Click it again, it disappears. So, here's my bar chart, and with data like this with decimal data, lots of values, it's fairly continuous sort of data. A bar chart looks pretty meaningless. Yes, you can see there's more green here, so it kind of gives you a sense that there's a higher density of values around here. But the, f the histogram is a much neater and nicer way of, of seeing this sort of continuous data. Um, that's probably a nice opportunity to talk about the buttons over here. Okay, over here you've got the summary statistics, if I click that, there they are, 222 values. Um, I can see what the actual data is, if I click this one, show the data. Um, and I can see that, yeah, the first number is 76.39, it's ignored the blank and the life expectancy and it's just taken my numbers as I expect. So if you're not sure it's done something sensible with your numbers, you can have a look at them all down there. Um, to get rid of that, just toggle this button over here again, click that, and it disappears. So, toggle those things. Anyway, I was going to show this one here, which allows you to show two graphs, one under another, for comparison. Okay? So, oh, and this one's disappeared. Sometimes it disappears, just tweak things a bit, it's redrawing. Sometimes 
doesn't quite work, just change something and it will reappear. So here's my histogram and then I can put underneath it what the bar chart looks like. Okay, and compare, well you can see the density here but you can see the histogram is perhaps a neater, nicer way of seeing the same data. Okay, it all lines up, it's lined up the scales. That's quite nice for comparison, isn't it? Um, alternatively, I could say, well, let's see what a box plot looks like to represent the same data. Okay, oh, now that's quite interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like you've got your clear mode here, but underneath here, your median here and your central data is here because it's very left skewed, of course, okay, with this big skew over here. Um, and you can see that skew on the uh, on the box plot. Okay, so comparing these two things. Now I've got these two things. How do I get rid of them? I get back to one screen. It's a toggle thing. This toggle just to show the second plot. Click it again, removes it. I've just got back to the one graph. Okay. So summary, raw data, toggle things. This gives you some other. Well, basically close and go back to the other thing. So we're not going to use that. Um, so that's what those bits there, we've seen that and we've seen that. So, and you've seen a little bit um, that there's box plots and bar charts and things like that. And on the box plot, um, this is an outlier. If I, if I don't want the outliers as crosses, again, into the options, if you're not sure how to do something, I can untick that so it doesn't show the outliers and it just puts it there. Let's see what that changes yet. Yeah, you see the difference? Lovely. Okay, and then I can get rid of the options by clicking that again. Um, I don't know that there's much more to say on that. Um, stem and leaf, you can change the detail of these things, and it's quite interesting how it's dealing with decimal data. Um, and, and you can figure out what's going on there. Um, right, so let's go back to here. That was all on one variable analysis. There are two other types of options here. First of all, if you want more than one box plot. So if you want, for instance, a box plot of life expectancy in Europe and a life expectancy in Africa, um, you could group your data into two columns, a Europe column and an Africa column. You'd then select your two columns. This obviously isn't that, but I'd select two columns and then you choose your multiple variable analysis and the hint is it's got your stacked box plots there. So click that and then you've got your stacked box plots. Now this looks silly because I've got life expectancy and birth rate which is completely different but if it was the same thing, different areas, you'd see them for comparison on the same scale on the bottom. Move, drag or select objects. Can I move them? Yeah, that's, um, I don't know whether you can do that. Maybe you can't. Anyway, stack box plots, this, that's the only option here, but there are some options on here whether to show your outliers. Um, and you can press that to export as a picture. Okay? Um, and of course, you can see your summary statistics down the bottom this time. Okay? Um, now, last option is if I select two columns, um, more appropriate to this data because that wasn't really appropriate doing multiple variable analysis is two variable regression analysis. So I've got two columns, click that, pause, and I will get a scatter diagram. Okay. Um, options, I can put a line graph. Unfortunately it's not a line of best fit. It's just to join the dots one after another. Might be appropriate in some situations, not this though. Um, show my grid, automatic dimensions, you can change the scales basically. Um, so it's a scatter plot, it won't draw a line of best fit, you need some other um, system for that. Uh, with the residual plot, that doesn't really do anything for this data. Um, you can get the summary data, okay, which has got the extra things here and gives you your correlation coefficient. So you can get a lot of the key numbers, the number crunching from here, but it won't put on your line of best fit. Um, undo that. 
basically this toggle thing, you've got to get used to the toggles. And the other thing with these ones, you can switch the axes around, that's this button here, switch the x's and y's around um, for your two variable analysis. I think that's about it. Um, obviously if you want to see any of that again, just rewind and replay the appropriate bit of video. Thank you for listening.